Friends, welcome to worship for Sunday, November 13th, 2022, the 23rd and last Sunday of the Pentecost season. Next Sunday, we'll observe Reign of Christ Sunday, the last Sunday of the church year, and then Advent will begin on November 27th. As the church year turns, we also enter into a time of lots of celebration and excitement with preparations for Thanksgiving and Christmas well underway, many people getting ready for deer hunting season and the excitement from yesterday of Shay Acton's football team advancing to the state championship game. At the same time though, there is a lot of struggle. People dealing with incredibly challenging situations in their lives and grief that comes through new losses and the remembrance of those we love, no matter how long they have been gone from this world. In news of the world, the current U.S. election cycle is drawing to a close. In several races across the country, votes are still being counted, but for a moment, at least here in Wisconsin, the ads and mailings and bitterness have ended. The war in Ukraine continues and winter is rapidly approaching with worries about how people will survive in bombed buildings and with damage to the nation's utility systems. The famine in Africa continues to get worse due to climate change and limits on grain exports from Ukraine because of the war. South Korea is still dealing with the aftermath of the horrible Halloween party disaster that killed so many. Another hurricane made landfall in Florida and is now working its way up the East Coast, and a powerful earthquake struck off the coast of Tonga, causing worries about a tsunami in the South Pacific. In all this, I would encourage you to allow yourself to feel what you feel, highs and lows. Don't judge those emotions, but allow them to be just as they are. Honor those emotions as part of who you are, a beloved child of God, and listen to those emotions, for all of them are trying to tell us something about what we need to know and to be and to do with our lives. In parish news, thank you to everyone who has supported the Cecil Fall Soup Sale and the Black Creek Youth Turkey Fundraiser. This draws to a close our 2022 fundraising season, and I am so in awe for all of your generosity financially and spiritually as you have helped our parish during our events. We move now towards Advent, and my hope is to have your home devotional books to you by next Sunday, November 20th, but for certain they will be with you by the first Sunday of Advent, November 27th, and Christmas program parts will be distributed soon to all our children and youth so that we can enjoy their retelling of the Christmas story in worship on Sunday, December 18th. So you can mark your calendars now, plan on joining us at the Black Creek All Church Christmas party, and hey, Trinity and Cecil folks, you can come too. Thursday, December 1st with a potluck dinner at 6.30 p.m. and a program to follow. Christmas Eve worship will be on Saturday, December 24th at Cecil at 3 p.m., Trinity at 5 p.m., and Black Creek at 7 p.m. And because Christmas Day is a Sunday, there will be no worship at any of our parish churches on that day, so you can spend it with family and friends. In parish prayers, please, please keep the family of Noel Marks in your heart. Noel passed away suddenly on Thursday, November 10th. His funeral services will be as follows. Monday, November 14th at Mule Betcher Funeral Home in Seymour with visitation from 4 to 7 p.m. Tuesday, November 15th at St. John's in Cecil with visitation from 9.30 to 11 a.m. and the service at 11 a.m. Please keep Dora Schmidt from Black Creek and her family in your prayers as she continues to be in the hospital dealing with infections and requiring more surgery. And keep Helen Sassman in your prayers as she passed early this morning on Saturday at the age of 97 and hold her husband Ralph in your heart. Remember that in all things I am here with you and for you. Never think that I am too busy to take your call. Really, truly, that's why I'm here. Let us work on this life and this world together. And now, I invite you to bring yourself to a spirit of worship. God of life, gather us together. May our faith be renewed. May our days be filled with gratitude. May our relationships be filled with kindness. May our hearts be filled with grace. 
May our lives be filled with hope, and may all we do bring you praise. Amen. Our first hymn, All People That on Earth Do Dwell, is an adaptation of the hundredth song, set to the tune you might know as the doxology, and a celebration of God's blessings in our lives. Let us pray together, remembering the Spirit's presence with us always. Spirit of God, come to us in this time of worship. Remind us of the deepest truth of our faith. We are known and loved by you, completely and without conditions. Inspire us that we might live out that truth, sharing your grace and mercy with others. Guide us that we might become the people you know us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And joining our hearts and minds together with Christians around the world and throughout time, we trust in God's promise to hear us, the joys and struggles of our hearts and minds, and in the power of prayer to encourage us in our life of faith. Let us pray. Holy God, we come today in joy, celebrating your presence with us through all that life brings. We thank you for all that is good and gracious, holy and wonderful. We celebrate friends and family, birthdays, anniversaries, new life, new opportunities, and the changing of the seasons, the reminder from the world around us that you are with us, whatever changes life might bring. We thank you for the gift of your creation, and we pray for the wisdom to care for it the best that we can. We thank you for the love, faith, flexibility, and courage of our parish and our communities as we live through these days. We thank you for the strength we have from being part of a group of your disciples committed to one another for all of this life's journey. Remind us that you are with us now and always. Help us to see you and your presence surrounding us in our daily lives. Open our eyes and our hearts to the small miracles and the utter goodness that are everywhere if we would only learn to see this world the way you do. We pray for those who stand in harm's way in our name, for soldiers, sailors, firefighters, police officers, and first responders. Keep them safe as they do their work and be with all who have served. Be with all those whose work allows us to live, who are essential to us and to the life of the world, those on whose labor we depend, who are so often unseen and taken for granted. Help us to be grateful, kind, and compassionate. 
We pray for all who work in health care in any way and pray they might have the courage they need for the days ahead as they deal with the challenges of our own health and our collective health. Watch over and guide our students, teachers, staff, aides, and families during this school year. Guide and inspire them. Give them the strength that they need. We pray for those in government and trusted with the sacred responsibility of leading our communities and the world. We pray that particularly those in government in the United States might help us find a way forward that works to end the crisis of gun violence and all that divides us guide their hearts and minds on the path to peace for us and for all creation. We pray for those who are struggling in body, mind, and spirit. May your grace come to all in need, particularly those recovering from hospitalization and surgery, those dealing with the challenges of cancer, those dealing with addiction in its many forms, those with mental health concerns, those who are imprisoned, those dealing with isolation, fear, and worry about this time in their lives and in the life of the world. Be with us all and fill us with your loving kindness. We pray for those who are grieving, whether that loss is new or many years old, and all those whose hearts ache for someone they love. We pray for Noel Marx's family at his sudden passing and as they prepare for his funeral this coming week. We pray for Helen Sassman at her passing this morning after a wonderful 97 years of life. We pray for all whose private grief has become public. Bring us comfort and help us to trust in your promise through Jesus of life everlasting. We pray for the places around this world that are living under the shadow of war and violence. We pray for Ukraine and Iran, for Haiti, Sri Lanka and Bangladesh, for Chad, Syria and Yemen, for Tigre, Burkina Faso and Colombia, for Peru, Argentina and Afghanistan, for South Sudan and the Horn of Africa, for the Uyghur people and the Rohingya people, for Palestine and Israel and all the places in need of your healing love. We pray for our own country when we ask for peace, O oh God. We pray particularly for those killed and injured by gun violence and all the places where this senseless destruction brings heartache and pain. We need the courage and conviction to face this epidemic and the will to act in ways that help us create a better future. From the depths of who we are, we pray for peace, for your peace to come to all of this world that you love so very much. We pray for the people around the world dealing with extreme weather, including flooding, wildfires, drought, famine, and destructive storms. We pray for all those cleaning up from hurricane damage, from flash flooding, from fires, and for every place, O oh God, where your people are struggling. We pray for those who are helping communities affected by these extremes, bringing aid and companionship. And we pray for our collective will to do all we can to help heal our planet. Be with the families of the missing and murdered indigenous people across the country. Be with all who are victims of violence, sexism, racism, and the interconnected isms that cause hatred and discrimination. Help us to be honest about our shared history, particularly the history of slavery, residential schools, and sexism. Be with our country as we face the challenges of living together, all of us with different thoughts and experiences. Guide us that we might work with you to create a new world, a way forward that honors the dignity of all people, that recognizes your presence in all people and all creation. Remind us how much we need you and each other. Remind us that our faith is not just for us, but is your call in our lives to reach out to those in need with our words and our actions, that your kingdom might come in its fullness. Help us hold on to the peace that you give, a peace this world cannot provide and cannot take away. Renew our hope, strengthen our faith, deepen our patience, and inspire our hearts, O oh God, 
give us all we need for whatever lies ahead. And trusting in your incredible love that knows us to the depths of who we are, we offer all our prayers with the words that Jesus taught his first disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. We come now to a time of confession, because we know that none of us have lived as fully and faithfully as we could have. We come trusting in God's grace that receives us, forgives us, and turns our hearts and lives back to the path that Jesus showed us. Let us pray. Holy God, your dream for us and for the world is so much greater than our own, so much bigger than we can imagine. You promise a new heaven and a new earth, a place of joy and peace for all, but it seems too far beyond our reach. We see wars, hatred, and violence, and we despair, wondering if it will ever stop. We see oppression and injustice, but we are afraid, and so we keep silent. We have become short on hope and long on fear. Forgive us. Help us to believe, to truly believe in you and your promise. Open our eyes to you and your presence each day. Open our hearts to what you are creating in us, around us, and through us. Open our spirits that we might work with you for the glory of this new creation, offering hope for our hurting world in all we say and do. In courage we pray. Amen. And now, in this time of silence, we bring our own personal concerns and confessions to God's incredible love. Hear the good news. God loves you. God receives you this day, offering you forgiveness, mercy, and new life. Thanks be to God. Our first scripture reading is a prayer of joy and celebration, calling on all the earth, on all creation to rejoice in God's goodness and reminding us of God's incredible promise and presence in our lives. Reading Psalm 98, adapted from the New Revised Standard Version. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for God has done marvelous things. God's right hand and holy arm have gained victory. The Lord has made known this victory. God has revealed their vindication in the sight of the nations. God has remembered steadfast love and faithfulness for the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before God, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord who is coming to judge the earth. God will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with fairness. Our next hymn now is the time approaching is a song of anticipation of the coming of the fullness of God's kingdom and a prayer that we might do all we can in these days to work for that kingdom in our lives and in the life of the world. Let's 
blessed garden and God the God of peace. Let all that now divides us remove and pass away like mist of early morning before the blaze of day. Let all that now unites us more sweet and lasting prove a close bond of union in blessed lands of love. O oh, long expected dawn, in a come with your cheering ray, yet shall the promise beckon and lead us not astray. O oh, sweet anticipation, it cheers the watchers on to pray and hope and labor. We read today from the prophet Isaiah, calling the people to trust in God's promise of renewal even in the midst of their deepest struggle. Reading from Isaiah chapter 65, verses 17 through 25, adapted from the New Revised Standard Version. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy, and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it, or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days, or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food, shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing and the living of these scriptures. The people of Israel are having a horrible time. Everything they knew and understood about their lives, everything that was familiar and certain, it's all gone. They've been exiled from their homes by the invading Babylonian forces. They've been forced to make a life, they wouldn't really call it living, in a place they don't understand, uprooted from their businesses and their farms and their places of worship, and they don't like it at all, not even one little bit. They're pretty sure in all of this, that God has given up on them. And truthfully, they're not surprised. They have failed to follow the commandments, to do all that God has asked of them. And so it, it makes sense in their minds that God has just sent them off, away from the promised land, left them there in Babylon to wither away, cut off from the promises and the hope that had been theirs. They've started to resign themselves to their fate, stuck in Babylon. When the prophet Isaiah comes speaking to them the word of God, and they can't believe what they hear. Isaiah comes and says, it will all be restored. That the city of Jerusalem, the heart of the lives of the people of Israel, the very place that God lives, 
will be rebuilt. The people will once again be able to walk in its streets, to live in homes they built with their own hands, to work and to tend their fields and enjoy their produce. No one, Isaiah promises them, will take their lives from them, will steal their goods, will force them from their homes or threaten their lives. Everyone, absolutely everyone, will enjoy the abundance of God, living a full life into their hundredth year, and there shall be rejoicing everywhere. God promises that this new heaven, this new earth, will be a place of such joy that even the animals will know and understand it. The wolf will lie down with the lamb, and there will be no grief, no sadness, no pain or heartache for any part of creation. These words from Isaiah are somewhere around 4,000 years old. And truthfully, they feel just as fanciful, just as wildly optimistic to me today as they must have felt to the people of Israel all those years ago. Maybe even more. It did happen for Israel they were able to leave their exile in Babylon and return to Jerusalem, but it wasn't all perfect and wonderful when they got there. The streets were deserted, and everything was damaged from the occupying forces. Fields didn't magically start producing enough food for everyone to eat. Not everything was a bed of roses. There was still struggle and heartache when they got home. So the people set to work rebuilding Jerusalem. And they did for a while enjoy prosperity and hope, but still, even in this rebuilt city, it wasn't everything that Isaiah had promised them it would be. God's new heaven and new earth hadn't been built, and many trials and struggles were ahead of them, including the destruction of the temple and the Roman occupation of Jesus' day. So today, all these years later, I read the news of all the fighting in the Holy Land, the dividing up of territories, the Israeli occupation of Palestinian lands, the violence and war, the bombings, and the military police who have to keep a fragile peace in the heart of Jerusalem by force. And it seems that nothing has much improved from the days of the Babylonian exile, that we haven't made any measurable progress towards the promise Isaiah spoke of, the restoration of streets, the rebuilding of this new heaven and new earth where all would be peace and abundance. But even with the tension over those lands, holiest not just to Jews, but to Christians and Muslims too, with all the war across the planet and global climate change causing extreme weather and heartache and pain and drought and famine and political bitterness here at home and inflation and corporate greed, and people who we love who are struggling and death and illness and so much that we seem powerless to change. Even with all of that, I still haven't lost hope because I know deep in the deepest parts of my heart and soul that Isaiah's promises are still alive and at work in the world. I know that the promise is true. It isn't as obvious as we might have hoped and it looks a little different than we might have dreamed. But the new heaven and the new earth, the newness of life is still here with us if we'd only learn to see it. As you know, Noel Marks passed away this last week. He was driving, his wife Judy riding with him, when he had a medical emergency. Thankfully, they were at a stop sign. But even more thankfully, a pair of passing strangers stopped and offered help calling 911, starting CPR, being with Judy and even driving her to the hospital behind the ambulance. They left the hospital before I got there and so we don't know their names, but we can tell their story of being there at the right moment, paying attention and offering all they could to help in the middle of the unimaginable. Truthfully, that couple of anonymous Good Samaritans aren't an exception. It happens every day. That kind of little building up of the new heaven and the new earth, but we don't talk about it nearly often enough. 
people help each other. They reach out. They offer whatever kindness and compassion and assistance they can. They share from their resources or lend a generator when the power goes out or help their neighbor clean up the leaves or they shovel snow or drive them to the doctor or share a meal or feed the cats while they're away or pick up the mail or hold the door open or give a quarter to someone who needs a cart at the Aldi or donate to the food pantry or volunteer at the clothes closet or play bingo with the seniors or visit someone who is lonely or send a text telling someone they care about them or, well, you get the idea. There are hundreds of thousands of ways that the promise of Isaiah comes true each and every day. They're just tiny. They're written off as nothing terribly important, but in truth, every one of them is so incredibly important. I was thinking about pennies the other day. One penny won't get you much of anything these days. I don't think you can even find penny candy anymore. It all probably costs a nickel or more these days. We often think of pennies as kind of throwaway money, but if you put enough of those pennies together, enough to fill a gallon jar, you have about $50. 50! That's actual money that can help in so many ways. Fill a gas tank, offset a utility bill, provide the food pantry with enough money to feed a family for nearly two months, take someone to dinner, maybe even twice depending on where you go, pay towards a doctor's bill, buy stamps to send oodles and oodles of cards to people, and so much more. I think that's how Isaiah's promise from God, the promise of a new heaven and a new earth, really comes about in our lives. It isn't a one-time magic that instantly transforms the world, that somehow tomorrow we wake up and all will be sunshine and wonderfulness, our problems magicked away. Instead, it comes little by little, one penny at a time, one act of kindness and compassion, one moment of hope, one instance when someone realizes they aren't as alone as they feel, one breath when we know beyond any doubt that God is with us, whatever might come in this life. The newness that God promises us isn't the sudden coming of the kingdom in all of its fullness and glory, but rather the slow building of it, and our slow awakening to its presence that is already with us, if we would only learn to listen, to look, to learn, and to know that it's already here. Jesus said to his first audience more than once that the kingdom of God was among them. Looking around at their occupied homeland with all of its challenges, they must have wondered if he had lost his mind. But he was drawing on the deepest truth of our faith, that God is always going to be with us, working in us and through us to bring about the fullness of the kingdom in little ways each day. Isaiah invited the exiled people of Israel to open themselves to that truth. Jesus invited the people of his day to see it. And I ask you to join me in looking for it as we go through our days in the midst of all that challenges our time and our communities and our lives. If we can, even one little bit, embrace the promise of the new heaven and the new earth, of all that God is promising to us, then I know we will see more and more of it around us. We will notice the miracles, the building of the kingdom, the offerings of generosity and kindness and compassion, the moments of people helping others, of reaching out across all that we think divides us, wolves and lambs lying together in peace. And no, it won't be here completely. That is something utterly beyond any of our lifetimes, but we can find it in our daily lives. And more importantly, we can create it. Being the agents of God's kingdom, the transition team for a new world, the people who see and live into the fullness of God's promises that no one will labor in vain, that all creation might know the blessing of God even here in our imperfect world, because we see and trust in the promise, the perfection that God has promised us. Amen. 
And now, having worshiped together, let us pray in thanksgiving for all the blessings of our lives. Generous and gracious God, we thank you for this time of worship. Gathered or scattered, we are your people, united in our work to live faithfully as Jesus taught us. Bless the gifts we have brought and multiply them for the, great, for the good work of your kingdom. Nurture and inspire us that we might bring your love and hope to all we do. Encourage and strengthen our parish that we might grow to truly become a place of welcome and care for all your children and all creation. Faithfully we pray. Amen. Our last hymn, Unite and Join our, Your Cheerful Songs, is set to the familiar tune of Amazing Grace and invites us to think about how we work together for the fullness of God's kingdom here on earth. now, my friends, receive this benediction. May you know the love and support of our parish that sustains and guides us through all life brings. May you know the joy that is ours through faith in Christ. And may in all things the grace of God, the love of Jesus, and the presence of the Holy Spirit bring you courage and peace today and always. Amen.